Ooh. OnePlus 8T. The phone that actually proved me wrong. Oh man, and I'm so glad it did. Months later, man, how has the OnePlus 8T held up? That's what we're here for, man. Let's talk about it. Now again, if you're not familiar with this kind of, you know, new style that I'm doing, these follow-up videos, man, no script, just in front of the camera, just really just having a conversation with you and how the phone that I'm using or talking about in this particular case is the OnePlus 8T. How's it held up, man? What's been my thoughts on it? Has it changed since my full review? You know, what is it really saying out since using it? And I, I've got to say, man, this phone, it's the phone that I have a really big soft spot for. Bar one area, which we're going to talk about, which is probably predictable. You'll probably know which one it is exactly. But I'm so glad this phone proved me wrong because as much as, you know, OnePlus phones don't necessarily have a distinctive feature that stands out, which again, we're going to tackle, you know, there's always something clean and very well put together that's still very distinctive enough about OnePlus devices that I was very worried about when I saw the early renders. The early renders really looked like a bunch of other manufacturers really put together. And honestly, when I held it, especially this frosted lunar silver cover, man, color, cover, <laughs> color, man, this really just really really it, the build quality on this is nice one thing that sticks in my mind is balance it feels perfectly balanced the weight distribution is right the size of the screen is just right the width is just right the curvature at the back is just right it's a flat display somehow like just everything about it everything just feels tight and put together you know the alert slider classic one plus the power button landed in the right place the volume rocker you know the dual speakers it just it just really does feel nice it feels like you wouldn't even want to put a case on it It just really feels the part the build on this man it's surprisingly for the price in uk 549 unless you got under black friday offers which i know people are getting them on cheap you know no more than 649 this is this is excellent this is this really does feel like a truly put together phone by oneplus it's a oneplus device through and through i stand by that no cap no lies and i'm really glad using it in person you really proved me wrong the display i really like the display now i'm just one of those weird people that in terms of just watching content such as video anything with a 6.3 maybe definitely a 6.5 inch display and above like this one i know it's a difference when it isn't a quad high definition display and i get why it's not qhd because obviously the 8 pro we're going to leave it for the 8 pro to do that and it's an even bigger display but i really do like the implementation of the high refresh rate 120 hertz i compared it to the s20 fe and honestly it's a very subtle and minute thing how oneplus does 120 hertz with the optimization the animations of oxygen os it's so much better it's so 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 much better on top of that man the haptics i said it before this phone probably has the most unique haptic feeling i've used on any other phone you just can't tell the difference whether it's soft whether it's subtle whether it's strong whether it's slightly weak it just keeps you guessing i know it doesn't make any sense but i love the haptic feedback it makes typing on this the typing experience is so on point this is probably one of the best typing experiences i've used on any phone coupled with the haptic feedback coupled with how on point that in display front fingerprint scanner is which is my favorite position in display at the front this are uh, I can't praise it enough. I can't praise it enough. I can't praise it enough. Performance is on point. And I know people will be like, A65 plus, it really doesn't matter. Doesn't need the 865 plus with up to 12 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. It's a beast. And out of the box, one of the only few phones to come with Android 11 straight out of the box. And again, I defend it, man. I think this whole craziness of like, it looks like One UI, trust me, I've been using One UI devices from the Note to the S20 FE to the Z Fold 2. This is Oxygen OS 2 and 3. Yes, maybe slight aesthetic exchanges, but it's got nothing like One UI. For me personally, man, I stand by it. So I still feel like the software is clean, understated, one plus uniqueness with obviously that ease of use that you get with android that people really love to use <sighs> man it's 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 just i really i'm just really glad this film proved me wrong and i feel like yes there are some missing features on there ip68 rating of course for the price it's there wireless charging i still think oneplus are missing a key trick here this should still implement some form of up to 15 watt wireless charging 
I'm saying this more for the general people. I'm not a wireless charging person. You're, gonna, you're not gonna see me with wireless charging. I'm a cabled, wired, fast charging person. And my goodness, being able to charge from dead zero to 100% in no more than 40 minutes on a 4,500 milliamp hour battery never gets old. And the fact that the charger that comes in the box is cross board compliant with power delivery up to 45 watts, it's like my charger, laptops, tablets, other phones, you know, it really does it. And, and, and I really just like that implementation. So it suits more me, even though there are some things missing. I think the biggest Achilles heel on here, which obviously with software updates, OnePlus have really gotten around to very well as per usual, which they do, is the camera. Not saying the camera is bad, but I feel like the whole adding extra lenses and extra sensors for the sake of, I just hope it stops because really I see this more like a dual camera system with the main as well as the ultra wide. My macro wasn't really working on this camera and the depth, mm, it is what it is, as they say. <laughs> so, you know, the black and white monochrome sensor and all of that stuff, it just needs to stop. Apart from that, man, I don't know what else I can really say apart from, I just, I still enjoy using this phone. My work SIM card is in here and using it as a work SIM card with things like dual SIM, the speed, the fluidity, the immediacy of it, what more can I say? <laughs> yeah, so it re I know it fluctuates based on regions and where you are and whatnot, but in the UK and Europe, man, this, I still see this as a gate crasher. This is the disruptor out of the bunch. And man, if you can overlook some of maybe the slight shortcomings of the camera, which are not necessarily bad, it's a very color accurate cam camera in that terms of like consistency, I think as much as maybe something like the S20 FE is a much more all-round better phone, 8T for me all the way. OnePlus 8T for me all the way. Never settle. That's it, man. You want to see the full review? Links in the description below. Camera test, links in the description below. Charging test, everything about this. But this is just more of a couple of months later follow-up on the OnePlus 8T and how it's held up. And nothing more, nothing less. That's it for me, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy follow-up videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad, so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.